Okay. Hey, hi, I'm Cheryl Tebow with Mirage Spa Education, and I'm sitting beside the lovely Miss Phoenix Van Dyke. And we are co-hosting Alex Fox from Nailimpia, way over in the UK. Hi, Alex. Hi, good morning to you. Good evening to me. <laughs> yes, actually it is. And welcome and thank you so much for sitting with us and having this future conversation that we're going to be starting. And uh, we wanted to talk today about Nailimpia because uh, it's Alex's baby. So I'm going to be asking her some questions and just listening to what she says in reply. So we can put this out there and you can all get a little feel for Alex. And if you have any questions yeah. to Phoenix, just feel free to shoot them. Yeah, okay. Shoot them out there. And Sounds great. It's going to be quite a <laughs> casual conversation because we're those casual kind of people. <laughs> so um, we were just talking about when I first met Alex, and it was in June of 2019 mm -hmm. when I was at the Neolimpia in Orlando. And I went to say hi to Alex and say, I will be judging in your Canadian Neolimpia later on in that year. And she said, good, grab a t-shirt and get on the floor. You're starting right now. <laughs> I don't know if you remember saying that to me, Alex, but <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember it, but I know I am the sort of person that does that. So it, <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. So that was my first experience of judging. I was just yeah. thrown to the wolves or to the foxes, actually. I was oh, so yes, thrown to the foxes. Yes. <laughs> actually, changing the subject, do you know my my little spirit animal is a fox? So there you go. It's not something oh, nice. Nice. I like that. I like that. Mine's a white horse. What's that? Mine's a white horse. A white horse. Whoa. White horse. Wow. That's beautiful. Mine's an owl. <laughs> so. oh, I like that. I like that a lot. I wouldn't mind being an owl. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to start maybe, Alex, with um, how you even got started in. I know that you were part of Scratch Magazine for quite a long time. And do you want to just maybe tell us a little brief history of how you went into Scratch Magazine and then the Olympia and your Well, I, I mean, if the question is, if the question's more cited on how did I end up in the nail industry, uh, would that be correct? Because I was on a different nail magazine before Scratch. Well, were you? Oh, see? Yeah. 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 I did. Okay. Right. So what happened was I, um, my big thing in life was to be a journalist. Um, and I unfortunately uh, flunked in school really, really badly and didn't end up at university. So I didn't get anything that you need to actually go into the route of journalism. Um, but I felt extremely lucky when I was, I was working in advertising production for music magazines. Um, and so I was on that side of the fence, uh, just dreaming and desperate to be a journalist. And they ended up getting uh, a trade magazine for photographers called Panorama. And I went for the editorial assistant job and actually got it just based on being able to talk myself into the job. Um, and so within 18 months, I was the editor. Absolutely loved it. So I was well and truly immersed in the uh, trade side of photography and dealing with photographers all the time and writing about them and their work. I then landed a job on the UK's uh, amateur photographer magazine, which was Consumer and a Weekly. Um, I was one of 10 journalists and it was four and a half years of pure heaven working on that magazine in, in the centre of London. Um, and then I had a baby, which meant I couldn't do the commute from Cambridge to London anymore. And the people who I had worked for at the beginning with the Panorama magazine had just started the UK's first nail magazine called Nails Plus and asked me if I'd like to do three days a week writing for it. And I was like, yes, this is magic. I can be with my baby and, and be writing. And there's this thing called the nail industry. I think I'll try it. Um, and within a year, I was the editor. And um, I did that for four and a half years um, and then ended up in a situation where I was no longer there and started co-founded Scratch magazine with Scott Derbyshire, who also worked on the Nails Plus magazine with me. We did in fact, at that time, launch a Salon Plus, a Salon Ireland, which was everything to do with salons and spas across Ireland. 
um, and a business, a beauty business newspaper. Um, so we did quite a lot. And then I, I did run one uh, edition of the Nail Championships, which was in January 2003. And I did it alongside uh, quite an icon in the UK, a gentleman called uh, Keaton Patel, who has something like 15, 15, 15 championships under his belt or something. Anyway, amazing character, an amazing educator, amazing man. He ran that with me. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant. Then um, I started Scratch Magazine in the, I launched May 2003. So, and I left it just last summer. So I did 18 years with Scratch. And um, basically the reason I did that was because I fell in love with the nail industry and everybody inside it. Um, and when I started out, uh, it was very, very, very different industry to what it is today it was much smaller um so you could find your experts in the field very easily and quickly and I was able to uh, make all these amazing friendships um and basically I feel like I have um evolved as the industry's evolved uh it's been a very 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 special amazing journey and I absolutely love it and I'm not going anywhere I'm staying in nails that's good we don't want you going anywhere we like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the world likes you. Yes, the world the loves world you, you, Alex, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, that's in news, because did you know that about her? I didn't. Yeah. I think I knew about Salon, the Salon Plus, oh, okay. that one, but I didn't know about the Nails Plus before that. So, ah, thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, I'm taking notes. Um, <laughs> so tell us how Nail Olympia came to be. Okay, that's that's um, interesting. So when I was on Nails Plus magazine, I was approached with some PR from the USA um, to do with a new style of nail competition that was being launched called the Nail Olympics. It was being run by three brands that were amalgamating. The brands weren't amalgamating, sorry. The, the heads of those brands were having a chat and, and wanted to work together and create a non-biased competition platform that anybody could be involved in and feel comfortable in. So those brands were IBD, Easy Flow, and Too Much Fun. They got together and decided that they'd do this lovely idea. Um, and they wrote to me and said, will you write about this in your Nails Plus magazine? I was like, yes, I will. This is really exciting. And I loved anything that was international back then because, uh, well, you know, just exciting to find out what was going on in America in the industry, et cetera. So um, I wrote about it and they even sent over an advert actually. And I remember putting that in and really, really gung ho promoting this fantastic nail competition that was to be held in Vegas. Um, and so what happened was I knew it was going on, but I didn't, it wasn't until I was on Scratch Magazine. In, so I started it in 2003 In 2004, I said to, at the time it was being run by two women, Diane Dagnolo and Lisa Comfort, mm -hmm. who um, I knew, I, I knew both of them. So I said, hey, Lisa, can I come over to Vegas and go behind the scenes and see how you do the Snail Olympics? Because it looks so exciting. I'd love to be a part of it. She said, yes. I came over behind the curtain. I met people like Jay Harvey Yin. I absolutely remember meeting her. And I'm pretty damn sure that's when I met Annika van der Sar as well. I've known them for incredibly long time um anyhow I went there and I thought it was so exciting I loved every single um everything about it and I thought it was the most incredible thing and so I said look Lisa can I go and run this in London could I make a London one it was like yes of course you can and then we'll come over and do it with you so it was the I'm not sure how, yes, so it was May 2005, so I went to 2004, May 2005, I launched it in London, and it was incredible, what was incredible about it was I didn't know it was going to be so popular, but I got the likes, that very first one, on the floor, I had Alicia Romando, I had Tom Holcomb, I had Tom Bacic, I had David Fowler, I had Stephanie Loray, Oh, and you know, forgive me to anybody out there who's amazing, whose name I've forgotten, but I, I had industry royalty all over that floor. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and 
it, what was interesting in those early years is it didn't really attract anybody from the UK, but it attracted a lot from Japan, Korea, uh, USA, and across mainland Europe. Um, Gosh, yes, yes, uh, Viv Simmons, she was, she, she came over from Australia and won fantasy and oh my goodness, it keeps popping in my mind all these amazing people that came in and uh, competed. Anyhow, it was a humongous success. So I continued with it and, and over time, it stopped in the USA. I don't know, I don't think there was a 2005 or 2006 version. It's almost like I took it over and somehow it stopped in the USA at the same time. Very odd, but true. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been with me since then um, and it changed its name in 2012 because I, I was I was kindly told you shouldn't be using the word Olympic um, and so we changed the name to Nail Olympia so it's the same competition just had a little bit of a revamp and brand um, and I suppose to be truthful what's really sad is to 2020 and 2021 are the only two years that I've not run a London version on the floor, um, which obviously is quite heartbreaking because 2020, I could come to terms with that one, it made sense, but to not be running it in 2021, I didn't see that coming. And, and I know people are really, 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 really missing it. Mm -hmm. I think though that, uh, are you planning on having one in then 2022? I'm sure that's on your books in yes. the plan. Oh. Yes, yeah, so what's exciting is that the first live one where we'll be on an arena is going to be at the beginning of March, 4th to the 6th of March in Dusseldorf at the Messe Dusseldorf Beauty Show. That's going to be, uh, that's in motion. I'm working closely with Signature Nails, which is Stephanie Loray, or also known as Stephanie Fowler, um, and Yvonne Voigt, who is her colleague. The three of us are working closely with the Messe to run it in uh, Dusseldorf, which is extremely exciting. And I got confirmation the other day when speaking to the team at Premier Orlando that it will be going back to Orlando uh, for the 5th and 6th of June, 2022. And what happened there was when I spoke to the Premier team earlier last year, they said to me, will you come to Orlando and do it? Because you know that the premiere show was hosted just, just last September, yeah? And, um, but I, I couldn't fly, I couldn't travel because of the restrictions, etc. So what was really fantastic was that lovely, lovely, um, amazing nail tech that I adore called Gwen Dedman Little. Oh yeah, Gwen Dedman, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. She uh, went and ran a nail competition on, in, in its place. So a nail comp was there for the techs. Um, and ran a successful lovely nail comp and which was super duper and now a nail if will go back into there for June so that's exciting then actually as since I'm on a roll uh, it will be held in Mexico at the end end of um, October and actually London at the beginning of October it will go back to London hallelujah we'll have four next year I'm going to go to all of them <laughs> You. no not to compete just to be there <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great if you're there phoenix you can judge sweet We've already, i've already signed you up yeah for, uh, great i'll be like i'll be i'll judge in germany no judge in mexico <laughs> i mean i mean don't say it if you don't mean it we'll talk because oh i probably yeah. mean it <laughs> I, think she I, love that. I would i would love that I, I, I won't turn you away darling okay Okay. I was just thinking like with 2022, don't you think that because of the last couple of years where it's not been in person in the arena and instead it's been online that you're going to see a new group of competitors. I just, I feel it's going to be big and definitely there's every chance of that. And I don't know if you saw anything out of Mexico, but that one was an absolute blinder. Um, Daphne Fernandez, I, I don't know what magic comes out of her fingertips, but basically she held, hosted a huge land in Peru in Mexico. Um, and I think she may have got some people excited about cups there. So I imagine Orlando will see some of those Mexican competitors um, and the, is it Argentinian? I think the Argentinian 
uh, competitor there might be flying around. Yes, yes, I think you're right. I was thinking about um, who was it that is, oh, I'll remember the name in a second, it's but there's Nikolai. so many. Nikolai, Nikolai pa I can't say the surname very well. Nikolai, Nikola, Nicholas Paji, is yes. that him? I, yes. think, I think he will be looking at Cola accruing his points uh, around the world to be looking at cups because I, I'm going to uh, amalgamate the points from Mexico and Orlando to make an America's Cup, which would be very nice to do if Canada comes back. Come back soon. Oh, Canada's coming back. You know, Canada's coming small back. Little hint, <laughs> small little hint there. Yes, let's make that happen. Um, so I'm going to say we're safe to say that the Olympia is now a global competition. Yes. And um, one of my questions was, where in the world are you? <laughs> but you've just gone through, where in the world are you? <laughs> Pretty much everywhere. everywhere so yeah. I know COVID has impacted this. Um, now you've taken it online. So can you give us a bit of information how that's going to work? Yes. Yeah, so um, it, when I realized there was going to be no 2020, um, it seemed we we also looking at the world at the time uh, when I when I launched the first nail Olympia first edition nail Olympia online there were loads and loads and loads of us locked up or locked down um, sorry uh, in our homes twiddling our thumbs not knowing what to do mm -hmm. uh, especially nail techs that couldn't get to their salons all around the world and I thought my goodness. Um, you know, online nail competitions had never been something that had excited me or, or was ever a route I was ever going to go down, to be fair. Um, and then I thought, crikey, there's got to be a way to make this happen and work. So I sat down and conceptualized a way of doing online that worked for me, that worked within a Nail Olympia model um, and had all the, the, the priceless and very important aspects of Nail Olympia but in an online version that I could feel was prestigious, packed a punch that meant something uh, because, you know, forgive me for being quite blunt here, but there's a lot of online competitions that I don't believe in. And I don't think are being presented um, in a way that would work for me. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So I conceptualized something that I felt had the nucleus and core of Nail Olympia, but obviously a different flavor. Um, and it was astonishingly, it was astonishingly successful. I could not believe how many people entered. Um, I mean, a, an example would be the manicure section, manicure poster, 65 entries. I mean, it, you know, I remember the day Jan Arnold and Marion Newman got uh, started their judging for it, and they they couldn't believe it because. It, it, it took so long to load on their computers because for every, what what happens is if different competitions in the Nail Olympia online require different things. So it might be that you've got to take a picture, five pictures of a set of nails because I want them underneath, I want them down the barrel, I want them side and I want them that side and I want them above and da da da. <laughs> Wow, that sounds so familiar. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, and also then a mini video. So what that meant was when the judging started, it took so long to load on people's computers because you, you know, one, one entry, five pictures and a video. It was astounding. But anyhow, it worked. I, um, I got my amazing webman. I asked him to invent a system that would plug into my website which he did. He invented the system that you can go in and register. Then you can come out and you've got the special ID number. You can go back in um, and pay whenever you want. You can go back in and submit whenever you want. You can just go in and out, in and out. And that same system then um, oh, it populates the judging and then everybody judges directly into it, but from their own computer anywhere in the world. So it, everything happens from this one groovy invention. Um, so basically it, it's an Air Olympia that has, I gave it its own flavor by also coming up with brand new categories that are, that are for it. So that's why you've got the art on nails. And, and I thought one of my most favorite actually, invent a nail shape. 
And that obviously, I got quite excited by that when I met Mino Bo at Olympia Canada and seeing that he was creating, you know, suddenly people were doing these stilettos that were just a little bit more extreme. There was some stuff coming out of, is it Christopher Litti? Um, I watched in lockdown just so many people inventing nail shapes basically all over the internet. And I thought, crikey, let's call a category, invent a nail shape and see what happens. Brilliant idea of mine, I have to say. So, so yes, I basically invented uh, like another one of my favorites, design nails for an album cover. And the first that one I did- so smart. Right? I thought it was, and I'll tell you, it was just because before I came up with that idea, I'd seen an album cover where a woman had really amazing nails and thought, gosh, that could be a thing. Design nails for an album cover. And I thought country music, what a great theme. So that one was really popular. I did some great nails in that one. And the one I'm doing right now, which is the second edition, which is open right now is for example, it's design nails for an album cover, the theme being Soul Train. So I'm dying to see what's gonna come out of that one. You know, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Alex, will you keep Nailimpia online as a backup or will you continue to do it as well as in person? Because I can see when you said you had 65 entries, 65 people could maybe not have attended Nailimpia Canada and Nailimpia Germany. But now you, because it's online, can reach people who do not have the funds to actually fly, pay their hotel, pay their everything to be physically present. Will you continue to do that? It, it was absolutely never my intention to do so uh, when I conceptualized it because it was filling a niche and a need and, 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 and a very powerful and important role. Um, but it's quickly became obvious to me that actually there's an awful lot of people around the world that struggle to get visas. Um, even if they put in for the visas, they get them refused because the world's a funny place. Um, and there's, and it does cost an awful lot to invest in traveling for an Olympia. So having mulled that over quite seriously in the last year, I realized that there's no reason why I can't continue with an online once a year as well as, as well as the locations, because what you've got is basically I'm running two separate competitions because one, one is, is specific to being uh, live and on, a, on in an arena and it will have its trophies and its medals, blah, blah. But Nail Olympia Online also has its trophies and its medals and they're just as valid and just as uh, powerful and important because you are being judged by who I deem to be some of the, not some of, but everybody I choose is part of the best nail techs in the world. That's why they're judges for me. And so regardless of whether your medal's coming from there or there, it's a nail and pure medal and it's got value. And this does mean I can reach people further away. Um, and it means it's open for everybody. It just is, it's open for anybody and everybody who loves nails. Yeah, that's fabulous. I think sometimes people are fearful of competing for the first time. Stepping into that arena is very, very intimidating. Yes. And where having an online presence that will allow them to kind of like tiptoe in, you know, there's the people that need to put their toes in the water. And then there's those that jump in in a full cannonball, you know, <laughs> so some people need to tiptoe and what a great segue for you. It yeah. does. It does depend, Phoenix. I mean, you're you you know you'll have your own perspective on this because obviously you came from nowhere, ended up at an Olympia USA, and you know took the floor and walked away with winner of winners division one back in we we discussed earlier 2017 um, in Houston. Absolutely brilliant because you were an incredible nail tech, and you had whatever gave you the confidence to get on the floor. I don't know, but I do know that an awful lot of people don't have it. It is it it does hold a lot of people back and it is about um a lot of people make that decision to go into an arena when they've met the right person and they've got the right mentor and the right educator and somebody is you know guiding them carefully in their ear and saying look you can do this this is something that could be really beautiful for you just have the balls to do it um but if you don't have that lovely guide and mentor in your life then Yes, Nail and Pure Online is a way that you can absolutely be involved and you can, it's up to you what you do with that. You can tell nobody, because I'm not going to tell anybody if you don't want me to, as in, as in I have this thing on, on, on my website where when you register, you can put in a headshot of yourself 
Um, and then we put you on this, there's a competitor portal where if you go on there, you'll see everybody that wants to be known. There is their photo, their name, their country, their division, and how many competitions they've gone in for. And, and I've noticed that the people that like to do that, that don't want to be anonymous, um, actually use that as a really nice thing to capture and then put on their Insta stories and put it out there to their clients. Look what I'm taking part in. And if you scroll, look at all the people all around the world that are involved. Very, very good marketing. Very good marketing um, tool there. If you want to be, if you don't want to be anonymous and you want to actually let people know, look, I take my career so seriously, I compete internationally. Fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, Alex, you, you know, Mirage is now 100% online platform with, with our school as well. And, you know, when we first went online, um, it was most of our students were students who were, you know, stay at home moms, single moms couldn't afford to, to go to school, had to be at home with their kids, or they didn't have a school in their area. They had to drive three hours to go to school. It just wasn't feasible. So that's how Mirage actually got its, its roots was starting with the people who could not physically attend. And that, you know, that became our biggest reach was, was to those people. And that's where I see, you know, this happening with, with, you hear it could be the baby steps like Phoenix was saying for them, you know, to, to do it and get going. And I can just see global middle India. Huge, just, huge. Yeah. Already. Already. I mean, big. I mean, at the moment I'm sitting on, you know, I've the one I've just extended the deadline. Um, and by the way, Mirage is a sponsor and thank you very much for supporting it. Cheryl, by the way, thank I'm you guys so very much to be affiliated but, with you. It just, yeah. Yeah, I know I just <laughs> cry thinking about it it's it's massive for us and I I thank you from every inch of my heart for that thank you for supporting it it's wonderful to have the support um so where was I just going with that naughty me I just you were leading a segue into the different um divisions that maybe that you were is that where you were I can't remember where I was just going, but it'll pop back. I have just recovered from COVID. So now I've got this COVID head that means that sometimes I've got absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. It's <laughs> part, part of the recovery. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yes, there is an important thing, a very important thing, actually, Cheryl, that I want to highlight, um, especially because you have so many students coming through, through your, your, your academy, is that the beautiful thing about Nail Olympia, um, and this was how it was devised originally with the original people, it has three divisions. This means that when you compete, you let me know which division you fall into. Now, division one is for anybody that has never competed before. You've never ever competed before and you are not an educator because I have educator entry, it has to be by division two. That way, you don't end up, you see, for example, if Phoenix decided that she wanted to compete again, she's currently a judge, but I have no problems with judges then deciding to be competitors again. People can be whatever they want to be. So if Phoenix decided she wanted to, actually Phoenix isn't a very good example because Phoenix is now division three because she's got the trophy. She's got the winner of winner's trophy. Say she hadn't got the winner of winner's trophy and hadn't got a gold medal, uh, you would be division two because it's people um, who have competed, but not won a gold. So what, but you also are educator entry level in division two. So this means that somebody that, um, I mean, again, Phoenix isn't a great example here, but say she was a division two -er and her student wanted to, someone she's been teaching nails to for three years, wants to go in, they would not be competing against you on their first go because that wouldn't be fair and it'd be incredibly intimidating and it would feel weird. So division one, it's for anybody that has never competed before, be they student or a professional of 30 years. I don't mind. Um, it's just, if it's your first competition, it's your first competition. And by the way, just to clarify, because there's a lot of online competitions out there, I don't recognize an awful lot of them because of the way they're scaled and, con and constructed and the way they're judged, which means you can be somebody that has done five online competitions in the last year. I will still class you as a division one for Nailimpia because of the caliber of 
the way male Olympia is judged. It's such a high quality competition that it wouldn't be fair if you've done a few online local competitions to then suddenly find yourself as a division two or three. That's not fair. So I have my own scale. And for example, competitions I do recognize are ones called like Nail Pro. I absolutely recognize Nail Pro as an established quality competition. So yeah. that's just to clear that up for you because there are ones I absolutely recognize and ones I don't. Yeah, you and know, in, in hitting on that as well, um, since we have all gone online, there's a lot of online stuff out there and it's my stress to so many buyer beware. You know, there's a lot of great marketing and a lot of great advertising, but you really need to to check the roots of what you're getting into and just make sure that it is legitimate because like you said there we have a level as well in mirage that we do not it's not some standard and you know there's a lot of courses out there as well and so it, it's the same thing you really need to research what you're getting what you're getting. i agree and, and and something i'd like to punctuate there if it's okay cheryl is um and, and here i'm talking to the people who have never competed before and are looking at male olympia as a possibility I, I would just say that a Nail Olympia medal, be it gold, silver, bronze, is a little bit of magical gold dust for a career. Um, and I'm sure um, our friend here, Phoenix, would agree with me. I will attest to this, yes. <laughs> you've got gold medals, you've got the trophy, you've got the winner of winner's trophy. It elevates your career immediately because Nail Olympia is recognized and it's what's very established, obviously, it's established. It's well known in the industry. So it's, it's, it's a medal that's recognized by brands and educators and distributors and manufacturers. It is a known, uh, a known quality brand of competition. So it's absolutely worth giving it a bash. And like I say, you can go into Nail Olympia Anonymous. I'm going to have to know who you are. And obviously, if you win a medal, everyone's going to know who you are then. But you can, you know, you can go into the portal and register Sarah Smith from Kelowna, what have you, and, um, and not put a headshot in and not be on my website, but absolutely be in the competition. Now, things that are important are, number one, I will finish with the divisions. Number one, division one, never competed before. Division two, you're either an educator or you um, have competed but never got a gold. Division three is anyone who's ever got a gold. If you've won a first place, you go into division three. Now I have something even more exciting because I thought since, um, since there's people out there that have got the global cup, for example, because um, I do a global cup, it's been given out three times now to Madeleine Wolf of Sweden, Lena Kurak and Joanna Banderska of Poland. They traveled the world, though the years that they won them, accrued the points and won the global cup. Um, I realized that maybe there's a point where people of that caliber think mm, division three, is it really for me? So I thought I would titivate them and I created a division four, which is only for online, it's not for my other nail Olympias. And in there, I asked them to do five nails. Um, and so currently the division, so the division four is if you've won a trophy or you've got five gold medals, come into division four and you have to create five nails. One is a Russian almond, one is the stiletto, one is a lipstick, one's a razor blade and one's an edge. And so it's, it's basically testing testing the people who are up there in that level caliber of, 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 of skill to see you know if they can pull that off and, um, and and because I want to challenge them and that's the best way to challenge is to give give people of that level something that's really like ouch <laughs> which inside of there as well I want a French I want a pink and white and I want art and I want a solid color so that way we're also testing, let's see how that smile line looks. I wanna see a French to die for, and then give me some art, show me your creative side. So we are testing structure, form, creativity, art, um, and the ability to make that smile line on a Russian almond, yum. Yeah, um, I wanna just go one step further in all of this creativity. 
Alex, I'm 40 years, 27 years, you've 18 plus 20 years. Who ever would have thought that we would be doing this on a fingernail? I mean, <laughs> even to this day with all of this going on, people still look at nails and go, what? You can do that on a nail? I'm astounded by fantasy. Um, I, I still can't believe the artistic talent that goes into even just creating the design mentally, let alone putting it into a, an art form that sits on someone's fingernail and the whole body and the whole model. Can okay. you talk about that? Because that is mind blowing. Fan fantasy, it's, it's, that's a funny one. I mean, that is where, what, what I love about competing full stop and, and where, uh, things like the mixed media box art, which is 10 tips with 3D work on them, and the fantasy, which is complete look, hair, makeup, nails, costume, and the nails are 3D works of art. What I, I attune these to is that you're doing nails in the salon um, as, as your regular work, and to a degree that may not be stretching your creativity because you know the last five customers have come in and had gel polish and they've gone for single block color and it's like okay well I love I, you know I love the whole working in the salon but geez I want to do something I've done crying out and desperate to show you what I can really do that's where competitions become really important because I'm asking you to stretch your envelope, to, to push your boundaries, to just be whatever you want to be, do whatever you want to do. If you decide that you want to, um, I think a, a good one is, because I don't do, I, I don't accept entries that are in copyright. So I think Alice in Wonderland is not in copyright. So I'll use that one. If you wanted to create Alice, so you put your person in, a, in the Alice dress, and then you put anything to do with Alice in Wonderland as amazing uh, constructions, figurines, um, hand created with liquid and powder, basically. Uh, incredible statues, ornaments. I don't know what to call them really, but basically you're looking at people taking like nine months to a year, six months, ridiculous lengths of times to create these nails just to come into the arena and they have one hour to, to adhere them to the nails. Um, and I know that at one point it looked to me like I might have to cut that category because one year it went down to seven people. And then the next year, suddenly 22, and there was this, whoa, suddenly the nail industry really, really embraced the fantasy category. And um, because it is where you nail techs, it's, it's just, a place they can go that they can't go anywhere else with. And you look at people like um, at the Premier Orlando, I think it's when she retired, Hazel Dixon, the UK nail tech. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's when she retired, when she won there. And in fact, she might have, her one might have been Alice in Wonderland. Anyway, if anybody's ever keen to see what's out there, go and find Hazel Dixon. Uh, I think you'll find her on HD Professional on a UK website. She is an incredible competitor and has done 3D work to die for. Well, she's and one of the kindest, most humble people you will ever meet is Hazel Dixon. I'm a superb, a superb educator who I will say as well, I have a feeling that in the USA, um, her brand, HD Professional, may be brought into the USA by Gina Silvestre. Yep, I know um, her and Gina have been talking. I know I've visited with her a little bit, uh, a couple other techs in Chicago. Like we've all talked to Hazel because her product line is wonderful. Yeah, yeah it really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Aww. I was in the past. But yeah, we thought you thought. Uh, <laughs> and that's why, that's why, you know, getting into the industry and the competition ring and getting to the trade shows and connecting and bonding where you wouldn't so have important. Fun. You know, it's it's so, just energy. It's so important. And also, Cheryl, I would say that, you know, if we're talking here to people who are relatively new to the industry, um, do have the confidence to come and talk to us oldies because we're really friendly and the industry is full of really friendly people. We're in it because it's a people industry. We want 
that's what's kept me here is the people, the bonding, the networking, the watching people's careers go from here to here, watching them develop, watching them evolve. And, you know, if I'm standing on an arena, I'll, I'll talk to anyone. Just come and talk to me if there's anything you want to know, if you have questions. I, you know, like Cheryl, like you, uh, Phoenix, we're available, we're approachable, and it's an industry full of approachable people. I think that's wonderful. One of, uh, what is it? The ring of hands, join the ring of hands, right? And and in my mind, Neil Olympia joining the ring of hands, it's like everybody's holding hands together. Okay, we're all here to support you. And if the new people are coming in, just come on, we'll hold your hand. It's okay, Definitely. ring of hands. That's exactly why I came I, I came up with that and actually and you know that like, you know they say you in this life we don't reinvent the wheel when I was a kid I had an album by Argent and there is a song in there called join the ring of hands and I thought that's amazing I use that for the Olympia because that's what we're doing we are all holding hands together we're one big family yes yeah. I agree I'm so I feel honored to be part of it Really, all of yeah, us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So where to now, Alex? What's next for you? For me, well, um, what's what's exciting at the moment is the idea that we've just hosted the first Nail in Pier Mexico. Um, it was hugely successful with Daphne Fernandez down in Mexico City. So because it was successful, she's doing it again. I'm absolutely, absolutely delighted to have the competition down there. I'm so delighted that I'll be doing a second Premier Orlando, um, an Olympia Orlando at Premier Orlando. I'm so excited to be back there because I really, because I know that for the USA, for Canadians, for the for, for people in Mexico and beyond, Argentina, etc., coming to the UK or Germany is really not too much of an option. It's an investment, and now people also have the fear of travelling for very good reason. There's people that will probably decide to not travel for a long time so to have the competition over there very very excited I like the idea I'm absolutely hoping with 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 um with with, with quiet bells on that we can get it back to Canada because Nail Olympia Canada was such a beautiful experience for me and I would really love to see it back there um Germany it's Germany for the first time I'm so thrilled about that um, I don't know what's going to happen with Australia because Australia was about to happen before pandemic hit, but it's it's a toughie. With I don't know if we're going to get it back there, but I jolly hope so. I really do. So with Nail Olympias, though, it's flourishing as a competition. It's flourishing. It's got all the love it could possibly have coming from me. I generate all the love I can to it. Um, I believe in it wholeheartedly, um, and I and I will continue to do so. Um, I stepped aside from, even though I co-founded Scratch Magazine and that was, and you know, is my baby and gave me an opportunity to travel the world, meet amazing people and write about nails day in, day out. And I found that it was time to sidestep and, and see if there were other things in the industry I could do and, and kind of feeling a bit excited about trying new things. So um, I've joined uh, Alicia Romando and um, who's about to launch. So I don't know when people are watching this, it'll either have launched when you watch this or it, it'll be about to launch, but there's a new um, way of looking and talking about nails and about us, um, getting excited about nails, bringing people together and showcasing the nail industry. So we've called it glossarylive.com um, and that will be really hoping it will be launching around the end of December. Can you spell that um, yes, Alex? Oh, Glossary Live. So G-L-O-S-S-A-R-Y live, glossarylive.com. And it has um, social media, Instagram handle is glossary underscore live. Um, and it's really, it's a celebration of nails and nail artists. It will offer education, it will offer inspiration, and it will offer, as we're doing here right now, it will offer interviews with people around the world about their careers, um, their journeys, and what they do basically. So quite eclectic mix, quite different. I don't believe there's anything like it that's been done like this. And its nucleus will be a glossary, hence it's called Glossary Live. Nice. Um, so you can 
go in there to find out, you know, I want to know what a smile line is. In there, it will tell you this is what a smile line is and this is what one looks like. So essentially, we're a bit of an encyclopedia, if you like. I think I might have some students that I can refer there. Absolutely. <laughs> I would love yeah. them. I would love that. That would be absolutely <laughs> super duper. Um, and also, um, it's it's a portal and, um, as I said, a celebration of nail artists. So um, I will be talking to you guys about how you can get involved with content and, uh, and interview, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about me exploring the world and everybody in it and bringing it into this portal. Oh, that's fabulous. That's so so just um, someone brand new. Oh, I think I might want to think about maybe, you know, I've always used to like nails. I might just want to get into it for a little while. Cheryl, as a young child, used to paint my dog's toenails. And, you know, he was a little Doberman with purple toenail polish. I don't know how much he liked it and it didn't matter because I like doing it. <laughs> and that just kept me going since I was a, a child. So who knew at that age that this was even possible to have access to any of this. So I guess we can just say to those young ones considering an education or a career, where would you, where would you go with that? Okay, so first and foremost, I think the nail industry is one of the most exciting places I've ever seen or been. Um, and just for the record, I can't do nails, by the way. I have trained and I'm absolutely rubbish at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they teach us in business school, Alex, if you don't know how to do it, hire someone who does. <laughs> it's, well, exactly, right? So my, my, my feeling is that my, my job, my journey is all about celebrating nail artists and the work they do. That, that's always been my role in this industry. Um, I would say that the nail industry is one of the most beautiful places anybody could ever wish to work. You are going, assuming you're not going to, to come into it and um, not explore it. If you want to explore it, you're gonna meet the most amazing people all over the world. And you will find that some, at some point you can class them as close friends. I have, I mean, my world is full of nail technicians. I mean, full, full, full of nail technicians and I love them. Uh, and I've been accruing nail technicians, you know, for the last 20 years. I've been collecting them, should I say. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I, I just jest there. Um, you're going to be able to find a way to run, run a business on your terms because you can choose. You can work at home. You can work in a salon. You can be mobile. You can go and work for a distributor. You can be an educator. You can do session work. You can do work on magazines. You can do work on celebrities. You can do work for album covers. You can do it for magazines. The list is endless. This is a job that just keeps creating. So you can choose how you want to do nails. What I will say though, absolutely, uh, where the core of my principles and where I come from is I believe wholeheartedly in education. And I don't want to see people running into uh, into the nail industry and just doing it. That really, I find that abhorrent. I don't believe in buying your products off Amazon or Argos or any of those places. I want you to go and get your products from a compliant, established, correct mm -hmm. distributor manufacturer. There are products out there that are phenomenal. Um, and I believe you should be using the correct materials and you should be using them correctly. You can only do that with education it's absolutely imperative because there are so many things that you can do to damage a human being if you don't know what you're doing and we have a rise in allergies um there's all sorts of things that make this actually uh, an industry that requires skill and anybody that wants to belittle the nail industry I, I find that abhorrent as well it's a very skilled job it's a very creative job and nail techs are amazing people and, and a true nail tech has to know an awful lot and that's a fact so I have all the respect in the world for nail professionals because in order to call themselves a nail professional they have had to learn an incredible amount of science on the product side and the anatomy it's the biology and the chemistry before you've even done a nail yes and let's not figure or forget I mean how many conversations we have across that nail table there's a little bit of psychology in this career <laughs> as well you know i mean so we, true. your nail tech is your is it, your nail tech is someone you trust the loyalty and trust that's built up over that service 
really. And that's how nail techs end up with really great friends and their clients as well. That's yeah. what I was just going to say. I think, ah, I'm having tears. Okay, good. 95 or more percent of my closest friends in my life started out as my clients. And, you know, they've been in my life while well, I've been doing this 40 years. And I still have best friends from 40 years ago that paid me $25 at the to time get their nails done, to yeah. get their nails done, you know, and they're still. And let's not also, okay. let's not also forget that the joy that having your nails done can bring to a human being. And I know that when I go and get my nails done, it changes how I feel, how I walk, how I present myself. So let's not forget that the nail professional changes people's lives every time they do a service. Um, and one, of the, one of the greatest compliments to a nail technician, this is something I've actually experienced personally, is when people who have come to me to get their nails done have now decided they want to become True. a nail technician yeah. and they go to school to become a nail technician. So it's like, you've given them such an impact in their lives that they're like, I want that life for myself. So I'm going to do it. And I feel like that's the greatest mm -hmm. form wow. of compliment ever. Phoenix, Phoenix, you can make good money as a nail professional as well. And let's not forget that it's an astute business idea, an astute business model. If you price yourself correctly, and there's no reason then why you can't make a really good living. It, it brings in the money. It's flexible hours. You can be your own boss or you can go and work with, in a lovely salon with other people, you know, whatever floats your boat. You can then take it to different levels. So you can become that educator, that inspirer, that mentor, that guide. You can go into competitions and meet people, network on competition arenas and then walk away with medals that actually then elevate your business and mean you can you can charge higher prices and it just goes on and on it's a brilliant industry it is it is i love oh, it there's no doubt <laughs> i mean we wouldn't be in it all these years if it faded and and, yeah. and you know, it's ever changing nothing's staying the same i mean the, <laughs> that's a lie the fundamentals are always the fundamentals and nail prep is you know nail prep still nail prep and, um, yeah <laughs> the basics are are still the same but man it's an endless it's an endless world and yeah. you know it's funny it's like even if we think okay i'm going to take a little bit of break i'm tired and we'll we might walk away for a minute it doesn't ever get you can't leave you can't leave that that nail dust is stuck in <laughs> your veins you can't want to leave <laughs> And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. That's, we are where we need to be. Definitely all of us. Yeah. You're holding someone's hand for no less than an hour at a time. Oh, yeah. And you know what, that's an energetic bond that doesn't come lightly to most people. Mm -hmm. Hand holding is a very intimate place to be. Yeah, and is. so, you know, you really are becoming connected with those people and them you. And so it's really important that you be the example as well. So yeah. it is a very professional industry for I sure. And, you know, I, I mean, we love it or we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. <laughs> We collectively have what, like 75 years between all of us. So it's just insane. True. <laughs> mm. Brilliant. <laughs> That's so something, right? That's brilliant. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, Do you um, have anything else you want to say, Alex, or how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm, I'm feeling like um, I'd like to think that this conversation uh, has will act as an inspiration and just a little porthole. Um, for anybody out there who's starting out yeah. um, or, you know, reinventing themselves later in life for a new career, I hope that this type of interview will inspire you to dig deeper, go further and, and, and get involved because it's, it is really a truly beautiful industry and it's made me very, very, very happy. Yeah. And you know what? You're true. And I'm glad you actually touched on that because um, in our school, we do have a lot of my age, you know, women that are transferring careers and, you know, they're tired of corporate boredom. They're tired of all of that. And they just really want to have some fun. Who doesn't and want to be their own boss, really? <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, it's, it's not fun. a bad life. It's, it's a good life. <laughs> it's a good life. It's a fun industry. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's one you can take anywhere in the world as well. Yes, absolutely. Of course you can. I mean, crikey. Um, and especially if you travel the Nair Olympias. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, thank you, Alex, so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you you so much for having me. And may I just then punctuate the the end of this by saying that the official website for Nail Olympia is simply www.nailolympia.com. And you can access all the Nail Olympias through that just nailimpia.com. You can access all the information, all the different nail Olympias, And that's also where nail Olympia online, where you can enter that one. So you did say that it's extended until January. 30th. Yeah. 30th of 31st of January, it will close. Yes. And that's closing to have your entries in. It's closing everything, meaning, meaning you can register on the 30th of January, but you have to submit by the 31st midnight on the 31st, it will close and we will then start populating the judges portal okay so that's when i get busy yeah i'm I'm honored to be a online judge and that that fills my heart so i'm excited about that thank you for that opportunity so thank you so much for your time today alex you are just you inspire me you you excite everybody that you visit with about this industry so thank you so much Mm -hmm. Oh, bless you. Thank you very, very much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we love your accent. (laughs) I know. I love the UK. It's like United (laughs) States, Canada, UK. It's like my homes. (laughs) And we will talk again and um, we will have you more if we can. Uh, I will glossary my students when that's up and running and and we'll we'll oh, yeah. get some stuff happening in this nail world because it's now become a nail world it's no yeah. more the little shop on the corner yeah so um <laughs> sounds here good go. all right thank you so much alex thank you so much bye-bye guys bye. bye-bye